Katie Bowman and today I'm going to be drawing the final pieces of this lovely portrait of Hunter. Um, he's a lovely dog. He's a cross hound staffy mix and as you can see from the video here I have very little left to do. I've got the nose and the muzzle to finish off. Um, so what I wanted to do is just do a quick tutorial on how I draw noses. I've had quite a few people asking me uh, to just sh show a tutorial. Um, so what I'm going to first do is show you what I use. The pencils that I use are the Polychromos Faber-Castell. Now this is a very dark nose. It's very black and white. Um, of course dogs noses come in all different colours but this one is very black and white so it's going to be quite a simple tutorial to show you today. Um, there's a lot of highlights on it and um, you'll see the the picture of it at the end. Um, so what I like to do is just show you the, the pencils which is the Faber-Castell Polychromas. As you can see this is quite a blunt pencil that I use but what I also do is have a separate one of the same colour which I use with a sharp end. Now the reason for this is because when there are large areas of black I like to fill it in and just use a stubby pencil and just have this sharp one on hand just to fill in the tiny little details in the nose. I do the same with the white. It's not the sharpest it's been but if you want to get it really really sharp and get a fine fine end you can just roll that onto some sandpaper which is what I like to do just to get a sharp end. As you can see this has been sharpened several times and I'm getting to, to the end of this one um, so I'll have to replace that soon. Um, I also like to use different grades of grey which you'll see me use. Now I'm not going to sit here for the next two hours doing this nose with you. I will time lapse the video so you don't need to sit here for the full duration. So I'm going to speed it up as per each technique. So what I'm going to start doing is just adding in some of the colour and just getting some of the structure of the nose together. Um, I'll do this just using my sharp black pencil and then I'll just get the darkest areas in. So we'll just Using the reference photo, always refer to your photo. Just getting the main, the main bits in. I have done a very brief, if I zoom in here, I have done a very brief sketch in pencil, but of course you can't really get it 100% until you come in with the colour. So this is very, very dark down here. And then we've got a very dark area here. There we go. So I'm just going to work on this.
so as you can see I've got the main structure of the nose in there this line here is obviously the center of the nose As you can see on most dog no dogs noses this is very um, a very strong line and that's a very good line to work from when you cut to come to do your original sketch now what I've done here is um, obviously shown that where the shadows are um, now this is a very dark area so just add layers in here now most of the bumpy bits or the leathery effect that you get on dogs noses is generally on the top because that's normally where you get the the light shining on it you sometimes get um the odd bits here which i'll pick out as i'm doing it um now what i'm going to do is just show you the main technique of what i do to get that effect um, so i'm going to make a start on this top part here and then we'll start getting in the shape here um, so there's a lot of um, highlights here there's a few here and there's a few coming up here you'll see by the the, the photo at the end um, so what i like to do is just use circular motions quite small circles um, just to get the, the the main darker areas in there and then i'll pick out the highlights using this finer one so i'll just start with the the darkest of the dark areas which is this part here so as i say using your stubby pencil because you're going to be covering quite a large area there's not a, a massive amount of detail in this part um so you don't need to go with the finer um sharper pencil so that's why i like to have two different ones so i'm not constantly sharpening the pencil um and just using circular motions get that in there so we've got a darker area here and then it comes up to be darker up here and then i like to just bring that round gently as it gets lighter obviously you go lighter with your pencil uh, so the darkest of darker areas you can just go over a few times you can still get a little bit of detail in there obviously because you're using circles rather than just scrubbing with the pencil um, so we'll go in here this is rather dark and as you can see you are still getting a fair bit of detail in there it's quite dark under here circular motions again just keep that going now because if you're using lighter layers on the lighter areas it'll be a lot easier to erase parts if need be it's quite dark here and bring that round and do the darkest areas here so essentially you're just going off those lines that you've just created with your sharper pencil and it's just blending it through now this is quite a smooth area here but of course it's not all one colour we can go in fill in those darker areas here So again, as it takes some time, I'm going to speed this up a little bit.
interest. Now, as you can see, um, we've got the main structure of the nose in here. So I've spent a, a little while just, you know, getting the main shape of the nose. So you can see now where the highlights are going to go. So we've got in here a little bit, in here, and then the main part is on the top of the nose. Now there are a couple of little um, odd bits in with the black that I've put in here. I've just spotted. Um, so if you want to lift some of that black, because I've only used a very light layer, you can erase. And then with your finer pencil, go around. There's just one little part there that sticks out. And then it's, it's quite dark underneath it, so we'll go in there with that pencil. Um, another fairly light part is in here as well, so I'm just going to bring that out and erase that a tiny, tiny bit. Just blend that through. In there. Now this is all quite dark in here and then we have some very strong lines that come through You'll notice when I was putting the the circles, as it were, on onto the onto the nose, I did have to amend some of the um, the lines. I didn't have it quite symmetrical as it is in as symmetrical as it is in the photo. Um, so I've just you can do that. Just you know, correct your mistakes as and, as and when you spot them. Now this is quite light, but it does. Blend. So we'll pick out those really dark areas with the black pencil. Then this is really dark under here. It comes up through there. So we're actually starting to get somewhere now, so you can actually see the main the main body of the nose. And what I'm going to do is just add some grey into here, just where it's not so, where the light isn't so prominent. And I'm just going to use a dark grey in here and just blend that through. Again, using very small little circular motions. When you're using the, t when you're going on the top, sorry, I should have said before, when you're on the top, you can use quite large circles. Whereas on the bottom, it gets smaller and smaller. The um, the details seem to be a lot finer than they are on the top. Um, so we'll just go in here with the the grey pencil, and it's a bit. darker here as well. I'll just bring that out there. So we'll just add in these grey areas. And then go back in with your black. Make sure you haven't lost those lines. Always refer to your reference photo. Don't just add them in where you think they should be. It needs to be as per the, the photo because sometimes, you know, you can put them in the wrong place and they look completely off. And then we'll go in with the white pencil now and really blend this in now. It's the only time I really use white for blending is for, you know, on a 
on a nose. The rest of the time you would just use the lightest colour that is within that palette. So if you're using a lot of browns, you just go with the lightest brown that you're using if you need to blend anything. I generally don't blend a lot. I do blend for the eyes and I'll blend for the nose. But for the, the fur, I generally use a lot of layers. And they tend to just blend together. So it's just picking out all those little highlights, but those that aren't as prominent. I've got a few in here, but I think we'll go in there with a bit more black. So, <coughs> starting to look good. We now need to start getting some of these highlights picked out here because it looks like a bit of a mess. Um, it just looks like squirrels at the moment, to be honest. So what we'll do is we'll just pick out these little highlights that are on the top of the nose. A lot of them do tend to be just little semicircles. So it's just going with your, your photo and, and how it is there. You can just use full circles. But I tend to use the semicircles and then bring out that highlight in the top. Now this can take some time, so I'm just going to speed it up again. Because it could take a good 20 minutes, half an hour to get all of these in. So I'm just going to work on that now and I'll then go to the next part.
Now we've got most of the nose done now. What we'll need to do is really pick out these stronger highlights. As you can see, it looks quite quite leathery at the moment, but we need to really make it pop and bring out those highlights. So I'm just going to use this um, Tombow eraser, which is um, just a round headed one. It's very fine, so it's great for very small details. I'm just going to clean that edge off because I've just used it for a couple of parts there. And then we just need to really bring out the, the lightest areas. Just take the excess off again. So as you can see, it's got a very fine point mm -hmm. and you know, you can shape that as, as how you want it. Um, so I'm just going to bring out these highlights even more. Just give them a good rubbing with this eraser. really make them pop. Turn your eraser as you're using it as well and when you find that you have got a fair bit on there just use your bit of paper just to just to take off the excess. It gets a bit frustrating sometimes doing this every five seconds but it's definitely worth it because then you get a clean a clean highlight on there which is what you want. So it's just bringing up these highlights around here. There's a few really strong ones here. And some faint ones over here, which I'll just bring out. Right, so we're getting there. Just need to come back in with the grey because I don't want all of this area to be um, white or black. You need it to be quite gradual. So I'm just going to very lightly just using circular motions again, keep with the circular motions. Just going around those not so prominent highlights, just the ones that are very, very dark grey. I'm going off track again. I do that quite a lot, sorry. So I'm just Blending those through a bit. If you need to then go over with the, the eraser just to pick out those highlights again, do that. So again, just picking them out with you. And that certainly looks a lot better than it was. I'm not sure if uh, you're the same as me, but I, I love drawing with an eraser. I've actually done a, a portrait before, which was I completely covered a piece of paper, and then I just used my eraser just to to draw. It was great. Loved it. Now 
I'm just going to correct this piece here because this bit's very dark, but there's a very fine, slight um, highlight in that corner of the nose. It's quite dark there. There we go. So then, last but not least, we're just going to go in with the with your white pencil. Normally, if it was a larger area, I would use my my flatter pencil, but I'm just going to be using my um, fine one because it's quite quite a small area that I'm covering here. So. And it's just, just blending. It doesn't have to be all the way over. It's just mainly this part. And this then brings out those highlighted areas again. Look at that. See how it's not so stark black and white, it's just a nice gentle change from one colour to the next. Now if you want to, once you've finished, if you feel that you've done too many light areas or some parts need to be a little bit darker, obviously you can go back in and rework those areas. I do like to spend a lot of time doing the nose. Um, well, sometimes after you've spent a long time doing highlights and things, you can sometimes lose the the main structure so it's just going over that and just making sure that it is there and just adding in those tiny little little lines that you have and that's that's pretty much it that's showing the technique. I'll probably go over it again. Um, you know, just give it another once over with the black, just to make sure that we've got all of the the details in there. I think that's pretty much it. I sometimes have to tell myself to stop because I do sometimes get a little bit carried away and if you overwork it sometimes it can take away the um, the edge but uh, there he is, that's Hunter and I'm just going to finish his muzzle and then that's his portrait pretty much finished. I hope you enjoyed it and um, please leave any comments. If you have any questions, please let me know. You can send me a direct message or just, uh, you know, leave a, leave a comment below and I'll be happy to get back to you. Take care. Bye.